My name is Mitchell Easley. I'm a researcher for the Power Electronics and Autonomous Systems Research Group, and I will be discussing my research on uh, reactive power injection techniques for grid-connected uh, photovoltaics at the distribution level. Before going into the details of my research, I think it's important to provide motivation for this research area from a high level, and a good example is the Northeast Blackout of 2003. This was the largest blackout in U.S. history. It affected uh, many states and parts of Canada. In most areas, this blackout uh, endured for several days, and uh, the financial cost of this event was on the scale of billions of dollars. In the aftermath of this blackout, a U.S.-Canada joint task force was formed to investigate the causes of this blackout and make recommendations for the future. Um, their research and findings are documented in a final report. And although there is not a single cause of the blackout, um, for a blackout to occur on such a massive scale, uh, the, the causes are, are complex and multifaceted. A dominant source of the, or cause of this blackout was inadequate reactive power injection. Or in other words, the starting point of the blackout, which exposed weaknesses in the grid's communication infrastructure, was inadequate reactive power injection. So August 14th, 2003, was a very warm day in the Northeast, and uh, with inadequate reactive power support, the uh, air conditioning loads, which have a low power factor, drew larger current from high voltage transmission lines. And this caused those transmission lines to heat up and sag. And a, uh, a transmission line in Ohio had sagged and made contact with the tree, uh, disabling that line. And with insufficient communication of this issue, uh, surrounding transmission lines were quickly overloaded and uh, were disabled, and within minutes the issue had cascaded. So there's definitely motivation to research reactive power injection techniques at the distribution level, especially with the steady increase of uh, feasibility in uh, photovoltaics. So in my research, I use a single power stage solution for grid-connected photovoltaics, the quasi-impedance source inverter. The energy storage components between the input and output of the converter allow for using shoot-through states, which create unique and useful dynamics for the input current. Um, this added control dimension allows for uh, multi-objective uh, control uh, with a single power stage. Uh, namely, active and reactive power injection to the grid, and also power harvesting from the photovoltaics. So with uh, uh, a multi-objective optimization, uh, model predictive control is an ideal candidate to, uh, to control this, this power converter, as uh, the cost function in model predictive control easily includes multiple objectives. Um, in our research, we use an auto-tuning technique for the weight factors in the cost function, where the weight factor of each control objective is commensurate with its control objective's um, lowest achievable error in the next state. And this eliminates uh, design burden uh, of the weight factors in the model predictive control scheme. In the uh, case study I'm about to show you, I will demonstrate the converter's ability uh, to implement low voltage ride-through mode uh, where the converter will inject reactive power to the grid um, when the grid voltage sags to uh, boost the grid voltage. Um, with our decoupled active and reactive power control scheme, the reactive power injection can be easily uh, controlled according to local grid codes. Additionally, we use a flexible PowerPoint tracking algorithm where the, uh, the converter can not only extract the maximum power from the photovoltaic string, but can uh, pull away from the maximum power point. And this becomes especially useful for uh, low voltage ride-through mode where the injected uh, grid current amplitude is naturally inclined to increase both with the sag in grid voltage 
and also with the uh, reactive power injection. Um, and, and with by reducing the active power we inject from the photovoltaics, we can set a uh, threshold on the amplitude of the grid current we inject to the grid. Um, I am using a four quadrant programmable AC source to act as the 120 volt, 60 hertz grid in the hardware experiment. In this video, I demonstrate the controller's ability to seamlessly transition into low voltage ride through mode, where the controller senses a voltage sag and injects reactive power. Currently, the system is in maximum power point tracking mode with the capacitor 1 voltage regulated at 275 volts. In the oscilloscope, the yellow signal is injected grid current. The light green signal in phase alignment with the grid current is the grid voltage. The light blue signal is capacitor 1 voltage, and the red signal is the input current to the quasi-impedance source module. At this point, the grid voltage sag has occurred and the controller responds by injecting reactive power to the grid, which is evidenced by the grid voltage leading the injected grid current. With maximum power harvesting maintained, the reduction in grid voltage has increased the active current reference, along with the non-zero reactive current reference, leading to a notable increase in the current amplitude. Now the grid voltage has returned to normal condition, the inverter quickly adjusts its phase to align with the grid voltage.